Okay, I think this is about right. Believe it or not. Uh, right there. And I think we got it. No. String wall. Hang out there. It is 425. A little bit later today. There we go. My address and will cause questions about what does Peter Alvarez have to do with blended learning? Night. Okay. So, um, Ben Wilkoff, I sent one of these, uh, running tapes, just because he sent his as a driving tape, and I thought, hey, I think the three things I just talked about from the, uh, Peter Elbow article that I commented on on Monday, uh, fit the question of, what do you think about when you think about blended learning? And, uh, here's why, Ben. Ben says, I don't know, what does that Peter Elbow stuff have to do with blended learning? And I think there's an answer. It wasn't explicit at all. It wasn't really talking back to his sort of talking aside of it. So, um, if I take his question a little more directly. Uh, let me try to start by recapping those three aspects of Elbow's work that I would like to update um, around using home language in the classroom. Um, the uh, And then see if uh, I can apply them to Ben's question of um, blended learning. And then I want to kind of think about is blended learning and connected learning the same thing? Or is there a big overlap between the two? Um, So, let's try to remember the three aspects from the uh, article from ten years ago that Peter wrote about um, using the home language. It's okay to use language one, the home language in your classroom. Um, when do you use it? What are the variables you want to consider? Um, so, first one was, um, the, the hardest one to hold on to in some ways, is, um, to understand that the words home language mean so much more than just, you know, the, your mother tongue, the, the language you use when you started talking with your parents. Um, and of course, you know, we learn so much of our language from our peers. So I'm always interested in what peer language looks like. Right. And of course, that has become so much more varied. Perhaps it hasn't, I don't know. But I think it has. Uh, because of online situations. So, my answer to Ben is not about how to co-opt or use or 
Um, it's really how will the teachers who are working in online spaces with students um, get them to to use a variety of home languages to propose and to think and to And to be thoughtful users online using all sorts of different languages. So the question to a director of blended learning is what opportunities are you giving teachers to explore and know about the languages their students use? That may sound funny, but uh, you know, I think it does start with um, thinking about what they actually do online. So surveys and careful interviews, even with some students, to find out what they know and can do online already. I just feel like really important elements of uh, of learning that teachers and the institutions around blended learning need to know. I'm not saying that uh, they don't need to use those exact tools that the kids are using, but they need to know what they are and they need to know more importantly, the language is important here. They need to know what kinds of linguistic understanding students gain, uh, what kinds of skills they develop, what kinds of uh, words they use. You know, um, when they are in online situations. So, yeah, I almost want to do more of a study of that myself. But of course, that could be a study that's included in any kind of blended learning situation, too. That students do a self study of. Uh, tools, spaces, and language they use online now, and how they do that. And I still have Ruth to unpack. He's such a fascinating person in terms of all of this work. Um, and uh, so, yeah. Maybe you can find a student like that and learn from them. That's one. Like, be aware of and don't assume you know. And learn each each time you get a new group of students what they are, they specifically are doing online. I bristle when I hear uh, overall surveys and this is what kids do these days. Yeah, yeah maybe. But, uh, Given that Ben is in Denver, what do kids in Denver do online? And what sites do they gravitate to? And uh, what do they make online? So, those are really important questions, not to just get a snapshot of kind of at the beginning of the year, but to embed into an inquiry of identity that students do in a blended learning situation. I think it's important that they're doing that. And it strikes me that uh, that part of the reason to um, make it a study within a blended learning situation is 
in a traditional classroom, traditional progressive classroom, the um, one big goal is to know your students and to be known by them. And you know, how do you know your students in a blended learning situation? That's a big question, isn't it? And uh, how can we make the quest to know your students uh, one that is never ending? That you're always getting to know them a little bit better. And the impact of that on your teaching and your curriculum will be felt. I don't think it's predictable though. Um, so yeah, that's one of the elbow reminders about how we can get kids to learn how to think and write by using home language. Second one, I think, was a little more obvious, but uh, it's about ease of use for um, media. And this is pretty simple, really. It's video, it's audio, and it's text. Um, and there may be some other variations, image. Uh, so that, yeah, the image, absolutely. You know, I'm doing the, the multi-literacy thingy again, because uh, the other piece is hypertext and, and all that. So, yeah, the multi-literacy, how, now that we have them available to us, and students are using them, in online situations already. How can we um, give them access to using the power of that stuff in their academic lives? Uh, that's an important question for blended learning to be considering. Um, and uh, specifically within the using your home language and composing process these questions that Peter et al. Um, brought up. You know, more and more I think what's happened in the past decade, maybe before that, but certainly, is that we're becoming more and more of an oral culture where we talk to each other. We don't necessarily write to each other. Um, and even when we do write to each other, that writing is uh, the talk kind of writing. So, what opportunities will students have to compose with video and audio? And I don't mean do video projects or do podcasts necessarily, but I mean think through stuff, do first draft writing. Um, on, uh, on a, using a camera like this one, or uh, their cell phones, or whatever. You know, first draft thinking, which then can be corrected and moved and changed in all different kinds of ways, including toward more standard writing, more formal presentation. So an important part of the media question is not only can they publish their stuff online, but can they do it easily, and can they do it in ways that um, encourage gender, um, quick, thoughtful, first draft kinds of uh, media. So, I'm excited about that possibility.